This afternoon, we'll consider the fourth commandment, honor the Sabbath day, and we will read the Heidelberg Catechism's explanation of that commandment is found in Lord's Day 38. Lord's Day 38 in our afternoon services, we're working through uh, the Ten Commandments in a series called Pursuing Holiness. Uh, so seeing the law of God as uh, a way of the life of thankfulness. Um, how do we become, by God's grace, through His Spirit, more Christ-like? Lord's Day 38, um, and I'll ask the question, and then if you want to respond in unison with the answer. What does God require in the fourth commandment? First, that the ministry of the gospel and the schools be maintained, and that especially on the day of rest, I diligently attend the church of God to hear God's word, to use the sacraments, to call publicly upon the Lord, and to give Christian offerings for the poor. Second, that all the days of my life I rest from my evil works. Let the Lord work in me through his Holy Spirit, and so begin in this life the eternal Sabbath. Beloved brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, if we are going to pursue holiness, we must learn to understand this commandment rightly and renew our appreciation for it. You'll notice in the Catechism, it says, second, that all the days of my life I rest from my evil works. Let the Lord work in me through His Holy Spirit. That is referring to pursuing holiness. Resting from evil works and having the Lord work His great work of sanctification, His refining work by the power of His Holy Spirit within us. So if we are going to pursue holiness, we must understand this commandment and renew our appreciation for it. We must learn to see that the fourth commandment is not a burden to try to figure out or a day of guilt and discouragement, but a blessing that we are called and learn to enjoy. It's one of those good things that if you understand it rightly, it becomes even a better thing. I believe as we go through this afternoon, we will see there remains a Sabbath rest for God's people. A Sabbath rest to be used to strive to enter God's rest as we look to Jesus Christ. There remains a Sabbath rest for God's people to strive to enter God's rest as we look to Jesus Christ. To help us understand this, a, a brief illustration. If you've ever been in a situation either at work or at home where you've been overworked and overwhelmed, where nothing is going right, and then someone steps in and says, take a break, I got this. I'll take care of this. You step away from it. You've clearly lost control. You're overwhelmed and you're overworked. Step away. That's, in a sense, this commandment of God, where God created us. He knows us and He knows what we need in this world of sin and sorrow, of fears and anxieties, where time and time again we find ourselves overworked and overwhelmed, filled with fears and anxieties, wondering we'll ever be able to achieve our dreams or satisfy our needs or fulfill our hopes. And God says, rest. Rest and remember who I am. And so this afternoon, we're going to see it under this theme, pursue holiness by resting in God. Pursue holiness by resting in God. 
We're going to see first, we'll look at the fourth uh, commandment in the Old Testament specifically, uh, where we see um, God commanding the Israelites to a blessed rest. And then uh, secondly, we'll see the Lord who blesses with rest. We'll focus there on the rest giver, Jesus Christ. And then finally, we'll end with resting in His blessing, considering what that might look like for us today. Commanded to blessed rest. So what is the fourth commandment? If you read the fourth commandment in Exodus chapter 20, it says, observe or remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. First thing to notice there, it is a positive command. There's two commands that are positive, as someone mentioned this past week to me. Two commands of the eight that are positive. It's a positive command, a command to do something. Remember the Sabbath day. And when you hear a positive command, you should recognize that God is directing us in a positive direction and saying, this is the path of blessing. And so what were God's people commanded to do? They were commanded to rest. Six days you shall labor. So for six days work and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath. It's a rest day. That Hebrew word means uh, a rest day, a a cessation of of doing work. It's a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it, you shall not do any work. And so uh, this commandment is directed to the individual, but then it expands it and it says, you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your livestock or the sojourners within your gates. So not only did they have to rest, but they had to give rest or give the opportunity for rest to everyone under their authority. Family, friends, slaves, animals, employees. For six days you shall work, and on the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You will not work, and you won't make anyone else work for you. So, God's people were commanded to to rest, but notice it's not a rest where God says, I'm giving you a lazy personal self-care day. No, it says, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. This is a, a weekly day, a rest day dedicated to the Lord your God, the God who is in covenant relationship with you. This is a day for investing in and growing your relationship with God. Married couples often uh, set aside, or they should set aside, regular time to invest in their relationship. Just because you're married doesn't mean you can stop investing in your relationship and similarly here, God says, I am, in, I am the Lord your God who is in a relationship with you, and once every seven days you will rest, and we will invest in that relationship. On this day, all of the cares and the worries, the joys and the sorrows, all of the distractions of this world will set that aside, and the vertical relationship with the God who made you and the God who loved you will come into the foreground. A date day, if you will. So the people were commanded to rest and commanded to rest in order to invest in their relationship with the Lord God. Now the Ten Commandments, they show up in the Old Testament twice. Uh, First in Exodus chapter 20 and the second time in Deuteronomy chapter 5. And there's two different reasons given for this rest day. The first reason uh, we see in Exodus chapter 20, 4 in Exodus chapter 20 verse 11, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. And so God says, on this day you shall rest. Why? Because this is a creation pattern where God created the world in six days and then on the seventh day he rested. And what does it say in Genesis chapter 2? He actually did something to that day. Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 and 3. 
1, 2, and 3. He says, God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. He created days one through six, and then this day where he doesn't create, he blesses it. He, he fills it with blessing. He says, this is a day that is blessed by me. And so, God commanded in Exodus chapter 20, six days you shall labor, a seventh day you shall rest. Why? Because I've blessed this day. You can rest and you can invest in me. Why? So that you may know the blessing of who I am, the blessing of the Creator God. The second reason in Deuteronomy chapter 5 that God gives is observe the Sabbath day. In Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 15, he says there, you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. And the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. So, in other words, observe the Sabbath day because you are no longer slaves. For 430 years, 430 cruel years, you were slaves to the oppressive Pharaoh who made you work day in and day out and day in and day out, and you cried out and you said, Lord, help us, Lord, free us, Lord, give us rest. Save us from slavery because we are overworked and overwhelmed. Where are you, God? And then God says, I freed you. I made you who were slaves, I made you free people. And so observe this day of rest to remember that you are not slaves. You are not slaves to an oppressive master. You are not slaves to have to um, earn your own life or earn your own way. No, you are my children. So rest on this day. Rest and invest. Rest and recognize that I'm the God who created this world. As much as you can do and as much as you can work and as much as uh, you can accomplish, I am the God who by the power of my word created everything in six days. If you're overwhelmed with work, just pause and think of who I am. I'm the God who set you free as you're overwhelmed by the task list that seems never-ending. I'm the one who set you free from the cruel taskmaster. Rest. Rest and invest. Remember who I am. And so Exodus chapter 31, as we recognize uh, that God commanded the Israelites to observe this day, Exodus chapter 31 verse 17 says, this is a sign. Exodus 31 verse 17 this is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So in other words, as Israel moved through this world, as Israel uh, settled into the promised land, as they lived their life in the promised land, uh, there was an identity marker that said these are God's people. And what was that sign? It was Sabbath rest. It was a declaration to the rest of the world, we're not enslaved. The Creator God is our God, and we rest because He blessed the seventh day. It's actually remarkable that in Exodus 31, verse 17, it says, the Lord made heaven and earth on the seventh day. He rested and was refreshed. God was refreshed. You may wonder, well, what does that mean? The Hebrew literally means to breathe freely or to catch your breath. A day where the breath isn't needed for anything else except resting. For six days in creation, God's breath was used to breathe creative life into the world. And on the seventh day, He rested and breathed freely for no purpose whatsoever except to 
rest and refresh. And so, as we think about the Old Testament commandment, the fourth commandment, the commandment, observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy, recognize the beauty and the blessing that God has given to the people of Israel in this commandment. Jesus said, we read from Mark chapter 2, verse 27, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. In other words, uh, this day isn't some day that is Lord and master over humanity. It kind of governs our life and tells us what we can't and can't do. No, this day was a gift given to humanity, gift given to the Israelites to say, here, this is a day for you, for you to rest and invest in the relationship with me so that you don't get lost, so that you don't, don't get enslaved, so that you don't get confused. So as we consider what this commandment means for us today, begin with the understanding of its incredible blessing for the people of Israel. And as you approach the question of this commandment, it shouldn't be from the perspective of, must we do this? But what an incredible day. What an incredible gift. What an incredibly gracious God and an understanding God who knows who we are and who knows how prone we are to wander, who recognizes how quickly we get caught up in all sorts of things and overworked and overwhelmed and panicked, and anxious, and fearful. What a blessing it is that this compassionate, understanding, and gracious God said, six days you shall work, and then that seventh day, let's rest and invest so that you can regain your perspective. It was a command by God for the people of Israel to seek His blessing. A blessed command, a joyful command. But sadly, and as we uh, move towards our second point, sadly because of sin, this commandment was just treated as one more burdensome thing that God demanded of them. And why is this? Because sinners with an unchanged heart think they know better than God what they need. And so God commands and He says, here, don't do this and I want you to walk on this path and the pride of sinners who wants to be their own God and sets their own agenda and follow their own will and ways says, God, but I think I need work. I think I need a vacation. I think I need a nap. I think I need to spend more time with family. I think I need to close this contract. I think I need to check on my clients. I think... I don't think I need to worship you today in order to find rest. I'll take the rest. There's other things I'd like to invest in. Why? Because uh, the pride of our heart is constantly coming up with these things where we say, if only I had blank, then I would be able to relax and really rest in heart and soul. If only this circumstance in my life, in my home, in my family, in my marriage, in my workplace, in my career, in my education, in my church family, in my investment portfolio, if only these things changed, then I would be able to relax and really rest in heart and soul. And the psalm that we sang says, do not set your heart on these things for they will not bring peace and rest. And so sadly, because of sin, uh, the sinners with an unchanged heart treat this as a burden instead of a delight. Why? Because God's command of observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, and by the seventh day you shall rest because it's a Sabbath to the Lord your God becomes a competing desire with my own will and want. 
God says, I must spend time with him. I want to spend my time how I want. I know God has requirements and expectations. I'll do the best I can and hopefully satisfy what he wants. But hopefully he doesn't intrude too much on my time. This is how the sinner thinks. And so what does the sinner do? What did the ancient Israelites do? Uh, they, they struggled to juggle them, and they created rules around them. And the day became an incredible burden because the desires of sinners competed with the will of God. Because sinners find, try to find blessing anywhere but in God alone. And so what happened in the Old Testament? Israel began to treat the Sabbath as a self-care day. Isaiah 58, verse 13 through 14, uh, the passage that we read, they went their own way. They sought their own pleasure. They thought, this is great. This is exactly what we need, a day just to relax and do what we want. And God says, no, 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 it's, You've lost sight of the Lord of the Sabbath. You've lost sight of the God who created the heavens and the world. You've lost sight of the God who set you free from slavery. And you think that you are the one that has the power and the glory uh, to create and to restore and to set you free. You are the one who thinks you can work your way out of being overworked. And so Isaiah 58 says, if you turn back your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, and the holy day of the Lord honorable. See, this is how God wanted the Old Testament Israelites to understand the day, a joy and a delight. A holy day, a day set apart to the Lord, an honorable day. And if you honor it by not going your own ways or seeking your own pleasure or talking idly, then here's the resulting blessing that will be established as you walk on this way. You shall take delight in the Lord. You will begin to see the glory of the Creator God of heaven and earth. You will begin to see the incredible power and grace at work uh, towards those who turn to Him and trust in Him, setting them free and making, uh, lifting the valleys and lowering the mountains and making their way smooth. But sinners were just condemned by the law and left, lost until God showed His love by sending His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world so that that investment of relationship might be focused on the person of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And Jesus, when He came in Mark chapter 2, He said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. It's a powerful statement if you recognize what He is saying. He's saying, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. As you think about this Sabbath day as this day of rest, I'm the Lord who made it. The Sabbath to the Lord your God, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. This day is mine. I'm the one who gave it to you. I'm the one in whom you are called to find your rest. I am the rest giver. Matthew 11, verse 28, he says, Come to me, all who are labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. You see, what Jesus Christ is teaching is, is, is if we take these commandments and separate them from God, we will never find rest. You can be the strictest Sabbatarian with all of the rules and regulations surrounding it. Passionate about making sure you don't lift a finger on that day, but if you don't know the relationship or have a relationship with the Lord God through Jesus Christ, you won't find rest. And that's why Jesus Christ came. Because why do we have unrest? Why do we have fears? Why do we have anxieties? We've lost sight of the God who is in control. And we think it's up to us 
our way, our will, our ability. And so we put our hopes in the wrong kingdoms and the wrong gods, and sin separates us from the God of true and eternal rest. Jesus Christ came to earth to conquer sin and death. On the cross He died, and on the third day, the first day of the week, He rose from the dead, and He says, trust in Me, and by faith in Me, you will have peace with God and find eternal rest. If you look to Me and to My cross, if you look to Me and see the risen and ascended Lord Jesus Christ, My Spirit will be at work in you, and it will take your heart of stone and it will turn you into a heart of flesh and it will take all of those false hopes and wants and dreams where you continuously uh, put uh, in uh, things that will not bring rest and it will teach you and train you and you will it will be transferred to the God of rest. Jesus died and rose again And so we find our true rest as we look to Jesus Christ and see that He's the beginning of a new creation, the powerful God who by His Word created in heaven and earth, who set Israel free from the Egyptians, is the God who said, I'm making all things new. I, not you, I and making all things new. Believe it. Trust it. Look for it. Long for it. Pray for it. I am making all things new. Our ultimate eternal rest, and the Catechism talks about this, and so begin in this life the eternal Sabbath. Our ultimate and eternal rest is found as we uh, focus and learn to trust so completely in Jesus Christ that we don't worry or fear about our life, that we can stand up to a king and say, we don't have to answer to you, but God will do what He wants. We won't bow down to this image. That we don't have to fear about the past, about our sins or the, the guilt or the shame of sin. Why? Because Jesus Christ has paid for it and covered it. That we don't have to worry about what's happening in the present or what's going to happen tomorrow or the a day after. As we look to Jesus Christ, we recognize our hope and our life and our future and our rest is bound up in Him. And so we sh can say with the psalmist of Psalm 73, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my portion forever. My heart and my flesh may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Or Psalm 16, verse 11, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. And so Jesus Christ says, look to me, come to me, and I will give you rest, rest of body and soul. And so that's the age that we are in, where Jesus Christ has taken this promised Sabbath rest where God says, rest and invest in my relationship with you. And Jesus Christ, the Lord of the Sabbath, has come to earth and has said, this is who I am. This is where you find rest. So how do we, as we move to the final point, find our rest in Him? Augustine famously said, my heart is restless until I find rest in you. My heart is restless until I find rest in you. Our hearts don't get rest perfectly and completely in God. The words of uh, I Isaiah speaking to the Israelites, they're true for us as well. As we think about uh, the joy and the pleasures of life, we far too often 
move God out of the equation and think it can be found elsewhere besides God. And so, the author of Hebrews rightly says, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9. In other words, there remains this Sabbath rest for the people of God that says, this is the rest that I promise you. This is the rest that I give you. In a world where you're overworked and overwhelmed, where you're anxious and filled with fear, there remains the rest that God has said. And how does that rest come, first and foremost? By believing in Jesus Christ. By believing in Jesus Christ. So we find a rest in Jesus Christ. And Hebrews 4 verse 11 continues. It says, let us therefore strive to enter that rest. Let us strive to enter that rest. Let us strive more and more to grow in faith and knowledge of our Redeemer. Let us strive more and more to grow in all of the anxieties and fears and concerns of this world. Let us strive to know more and more how Jesus Christ is the true rest giver. And you'll notice it says there, let us strive to enter that rest. Strive so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. Might seem odd. How can rest take work? Strive to enter that rest. Well, anyone who's had to work to calm themselves down or calm a child down knows that achieving rest takes real work. And so how do we take this fourth commandment and see how it is fulfilled in Jesus Christ? Well, first, recognize this commandment is not a commandment to bring guilt or shame or frustration or condemnation on the people of God. This commandment in the Old Testament was meant uh, to point to a way of blessing, a way of closer relationship with God. It was a a way for the people of God in times of incredible prosperity to not forget the Lord their God. Something that Moses warned in Deuteronomy chapter 8. He says, when you're in times of prosperity, don't forget the Lord your God. This commandment was a, a day where it said, look, in times of prosperity, rest And invest in your relationship with God. Recognize He was the creator God. And without His work, your work is empty. To recognize the blessing of this commandment, that it is not a commandment to bring into condemnation or judge, and then in the New Testament era, embrace the principle of this commandment. where we delight in it, where we humbly recognize we're not there yet. We haven't entered perfectly into God's rest. Some of us would like to think that we can work 24-7, that we don't need a day of rest, but anyone who's ever tried that has found very quickly that they're overworked and overwhelmed. And so, delight in this commandment and recognize six days God created, the seventh day rested, and so adopt that principle in life. Use a day where you rest and you're free your life from distraction. Work hard to make that day physically restful. Now, this may require a little bit of advanced preparation, If you recognize uh, that uh, the day of rest is coming, take some time the day before to say, hey, how can we make this day more restful? Husbands, you may have to sit down with your wife, ask her, what can we do? What can I do to make this day more restful? Where we can remove distractions. Do everything also 
that you can do to give that rest to others. So not only rest and free your life from distraction, but do everything you can do to give that rest to others. It's abusive to demand rest for yourself and force others to work. In many Christian societies, uh, even here in Canada, um, there were laws uh, throughout the society uh, where stores were closed on Sunday. As recently as 1986, it's not that far ago, long ago, 1986, the Supreme Court of Canada upheld Ontario's law requiring most stores to close on Sundays. So kids, ask your parents, your grandparents maybe, how many shops were open on Sunday? Why? Because we're going to be a society where we give everyone a break, where we rest. But remember then, rest doesn't mean personal lazy day. That the people of God be intentional about investing in your relationship with God. Focus on Jesus Christ and rest in Him. What does that look like? Acts 2 verse 42, 1 Timothy 4 verse 13 says they devoted themselves to prayer, to the public reading of God's Word, to uh, the offerings what does that look like for us here in, at Bethel Church? It's responding to the call to worship twice on Sunday. Now, why twice? We're not going to go into great depth here, but when you look, if you look at the Old Testament pattern, Psalm 92, for example, there's a song of the Sabbath, and it says it is good to praise the Lord in the morning and in the evening. It's recognizing that this is a Sabbath to the Lord God. And if the day is about investing in relationship with God, we use that day for that purpose. And so using it for personal also and family devotional time, taking time to discuss the messages, to read devotionals, to pray together as a family or with a spiritual family with friends. And be graciously missional in your Sabbath celebration. Remember, this is not a commandment to pile guilt on other people. Where you sit relaxing on your patio and you look across and see someone mowing the law and you shake your head and you condemn them in your mind. If someone's overworked and overwhelmed, we don't pile on guilt and shame. No, we seek ways to bring rest. So we're graciously missional in proclaiming the rest giver. It's one of the best labor protection laws the world has ever known. Everybody gets a day off, one in seven. There is genuine rest. Well, what if this, what if that, what if this... Don't be anxious. There's a living God who is in control. He's powerful and He's gracious. Look to Him. Trust in Him. So look for ways. Be graciously missional. Look for ways to bring rest. This is what Jesus said when He says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And then finally, Don't be overly concerned about what specific day a society may use to celebrate or use for this day. I think it's clear if you look throughout history that in nations where Christianity shapes society, the first day of the week becomes that day. Why? Because it celebrates the day where Jesus Christ gave us eternal rest. We begin uh, with celebrating the resurrection, recognizing we find our rest in Jesus Christ, reminding us that we find our rest in Jesus Christ. We begin by removing all distractions and beginning this new day in the confident joy of the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. 
But there are nations, Iran, for example, where Friday is the day off. And what do many churches do on Friday? They rest and worship. Why? Because God said, six days you shall labor and do all your work, and the seventh day you shall worship. You shall rest. Beloved brothers and sisters, as we think about what it means to pursue holiness, it begins with investing in the relationship that we have with God. Because how are we transformed from glory into the glory that is to come at the end of the age? How are we transformed into more Christ-likeness? It is by staring at the face of Jesus Christ. God's given opportunity, incredible opportunity in this prosperous society for us to embrace that reality week in and week out. Let's take hold of it. And as we do so, may we find genuine rest of heart and soul and look ahead towards that eternal Sabbath where there will be no sin, no sorrow, no diagnosis, no disease, no frustrating work to unsettle us or bring unrest. On that eternal Sabbath, our hearts will be at complete rest. Look forward to that day. Rehearse for it today and rest in Jesus Christ. Amen.